What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Dot One Mini PC. Now this is definitely one of the most interesting little PCs I've ever been able to get my hands on, and that's because this is running Windows 11, but it's not using an x86 CPU. This is actually powered by a Snapdragon ARM CPU, and right out of the box we've got Windows 11 installed on this unit. They actually make a few different models. I've got their higher end model with 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of internal storage, and it's got 4G support. So you can slap a SIM card in here and use a mobile network with this little unit. So inside of the box, you're going to get a 6 foot HDMI cable. We've got our Wi-Fi and 4G antenna, and we've also got our power supply. This runs on a 12 volt power supply, but the whole unit itself only pulls around 5.5 watts at full load. And this thing is super tiny. So I've always been interested in Windows on ARM, and uh, I've actually taken a look at a couple devices that were running it. Like the Odin Pro, you can actually install Windows 11 on that. It's got a Snapdragon 845. And you can even install Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 4, but it's not the best experience. So I'm hoping to get some better performance out of this unit here. So on the front, as you can see, we've got our audio input and output, two USB 2.0 ports, USB 3.0, and our power button. Moving around back, we've got our power in and two full-size HDMI ports, but this is actually a bit odd. HDMI 1 only supports 1080p video out with no audio, and the HDMI 2 port supports 1440p out with audio. You can run them together so you can have dual displays, but it's a little odd that only one of them supports 1440. Over here on this side, we've got a micro SD card slot and our SIM card slot. This does support 4G. Now you can pick this up with or without the 4G module pre-installed. Before we jump into the full specs, I did want to pull this bottom off and just give you a look at the internals. I was really interested to see what was in here, and it's actually pretty cool the way this is set up. It's got a Qualcomm compute module here, and this contains our CPU, RAM, and storage, and theoretically, if the company supports it, you could actually upgrade this in the future with a different compute module, something with a little more performance. The case itself is constructed of steel, and they actually use the bottom plate here to cool that Snapdragon CPU. It's got a little thermal pad here. And obviously, the whole mini PC is totally silent. There's no spinning parts in this unit whatsoever. So this is known as the Dot One Mini PC. For the CPU, we've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C. This is an 8-core ARM CPU at 2.4 GHz. We've got two A76 cores and six A55 cores. When it comes to the GPU, it uses an Arduino 618. We've got 8 GB of LPDDR4 RAM. It's soldered to the board. This is not user upgradable. It's running at 2,133 MHz. So this is the highest end model they make right now with 256 GB of onboard storage and that 8 gigs of RAM. But you can also pick this up with 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage or 6 GB of RAM and 128 GB of storage. We've also got built-in Wi-Fi 5, and this one has that 4G module, so you could connect to a mobile network as long as you have a SIM that supports it. Okay, so here's a closer look. As you can see, we've got that Snapdragon 7C, and they state that this is a 2.4 GHz CPU, but I have not seen it go up to 2.4. The highest I've seen it go is 2.2, and that's every once in a while. It's usually around 1.4 to 1.8, even under extreme load. But uh, we also have 8 gigs of RAM. This is running at 2133 MHz. And the Arduino 618 GPU. So this has definitely been a very odd experience. Uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, just web browsing, video playback, and things like that hasn't been bad at all. I mean, it does work out really well. And this only pulls around 5.2 watts totally maxed out from the wall. I've got it plugged into a kilowatt meter right now. A lot of these applications, like CPU-Z and even hardware info, don't give me much information on this system. And, you know, I kind of didn't expect it would. Even if we open up hardware info here, as you can see, Snapdragon, Qualcomm, CLS, one CPU, eight cores. There's really not that much information that I can pull out of this system. Now, I was able to get some x86 stuff running on this, and something like Afterburner, the only thing I can really display with this is the frame rate. And we're definitely going to be testing out some older PC games, but uh, really the only other benchmark that I could get to run was Geekbench 5. And with this, we got a single core of 505 Multi 1546. Not super impressive, but the usability here with Windows 11 isn't as bad as I thought it would be. 
For web browsing, email checking, document editing, some video playback, this thing is actually pretty snappy. Right now I'm actually on Ethernet, that's just usually the way I run these PCs. I personally just like to get a wired connection going. And we'll just check out a little bit of web browsing. I'll head over to Qualcomm's website. And like I mentioned, I mean, it's really not that bad for web browsing. Everything loads up really quickly, as you can see. We'll head over to the product page and check out their CPUs. We'll just check out the 888 since the Gen 1 or the 7C isn't listed here. But yeah, I mean, over a wired connection, we're good to go. And this does have AC Wi-Fi built in, plus that 4G module. Really depends on what kind of router you have. Personally, I just like running over Ethernet, so we get the max performance out of this. And loading up web pages, things like that, works out really well with the Snapdragon 7C. Now, I want to test a little bit of video playback from YouTube. And this chip really wasn't made for 4K video playback. Actually, the HDMI on this won't even do a 4K out signal. It'll do up to 1440p. But we'll go with stats for nerds. I've got a 1080p display here. We're running this at 1440p 60. And it does handle it. We do get a few drop frames on the initial load in. And throughout, you'll see a couple drop here and there. But by the end of this video, I only had 18 drop frames on this. And we're at 1440p 60 streaming from YouTube. So far, I was pretty impressed with the performance out of this system, given the size and the power consumption. This only pulls a maximum of 5.2 watts from the wall, and as you see, I mean, it does handle the Windows 11 interface quite well, web browsing, and 1440p playback. So using this just as your everyday PC for browsing the web, checking out some videos and things like that, it would work out. But now, I want to test a couple PC games on this thing. And first up, we've got Half-Life 2. So Steam did install. I can actually install basically any PC game that I want on this unit, but it's just a matter if the hardware is going to run it. As you know, Half-Life 2 is an older game. We're at 720p low, and I'm only getting an average of around 31 FPS. But we get a lot of dips, I mean down into the teens with this thing. Next on the list, we've got Dirt 3, 720p low settings, and we could only get an average of around 26 FPS with this one. Like I mentioned, Afterburner will only display the FPS. I got it up in the top left-hand corner if you missed it. I didn't expect this to run these games very well, given that we have a lower-end ARM chip. But, you know, it's still pretty cool to see x86 games running on an ARM chip in Windows like this. And the final one I tested here was Asphalt 9 from the Microsoft Store. I figured, you know, since this is a very popular mobile game for Android that runs on ARM, it would run well here. And it's really not that bad. It's definitely running better than the Steam games that I tested. So yeah, I definitely wanted to test out some emulation, but I've never had really good luck with Windows on ARM and emulation. Uh, except for really old stuff like NES. I couldn't get Redream to launch, I couldn't get PPSSPP to launch, and it really comes down to, you know, this being an ARM chip. But I was able to get RetroArch to launch. Unfortunately, performance is not great. I tested out Dreamcast, and just real quick, I'll show you. So yeah, not good at all, and even just in the menu here, we're getting around 35 FPS. Now, if this was running Android, there's no doubt that it would run PSP and Dreamcast at full speed. Not sure about the higher-end stuff, but there would be thousands and thousands of retro games that would be fully playable on this unit. I also went through and tested a little bit of cloud gaming. Here's Xbox Game Pass or Xbox Game Streaming. Really don't know exactly what they're calling it right now, but it does work really well. I'm on Ethernet and I do have Clarity Boost on. We're using the Edge browser and this is fully playable. It actually looks really good too. So even though this little unit can't natively run these PC games, you could use GeForce Now, Stadia, or even the Xbox Game Streaming to play your favorite games. So overall, the Dot .1 Mini PC did perform much better than I thought it would with Windows 11. And keep in mind, what we saw running in this video here was only at 5.2 watts. That's a very low wattage PC. It did 1440p very well. I know it's not a AAA gaming machine, and it really struggles to handle older games, but this wasn't meant to be a gaming machine. It's meant to be a basic PC for web browsing, email checking, document editing, and I think this little thing can definitely handle it the way it is. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Dot .1 Mini PC, I will leave a link in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this rig, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.